Hi, Mike Gibson coming to you live from Sky 2018, and I'm here with Yusuf Al Nabali. Yusuf, you know, we saw the Cantos results, which highlighted the role of inflammation uh, in atherosclerosis. You took it one step further, looking at a highly inflamed population, giving some anti inflammatory agents, and showing the mechanism, showing some reduction in plaque volume on CT. Tell us a little bit about more, more about what you did. Yeah, well, thank you, Dr. Gibson. I mean, I'm pleased to be here today to share some of our exciting work. Um, a kind of a bit of background to contextualize this. Um, so, uh, we, you look at a patient group of psoriasis as you said, highly inflamed. Um, Dr. Nehal Mehta has assembled this cohort of patients um, in order to study the role of inflammation and cardiometabolic disorders. Um, and we've shown that with vascular imaging that a lot of the inflammation in the skin actually is, has manifestations that are deeper than the skin. And we find that these patients have inflammation in their vasculature, inflammation in their uh, organs, joints, and to put things kind of in perspective, um, a patient who's 40 years old um, with severe psoriasis actually has a 200-fold increased risk of developing an early myocardial wow. infarction. Wow, I had no idea it was that high. Yeah, wow. yeah. and in fact, we even showed in circulation last year um, that patients with psoriasis have equivocal coronary plaque burden as somebody who's on average 10 years older with coronary artery disease. Wow, Yeah. Amazing. So, as you said, kind of Cantos and the New England Journal of Medicine showed us that Canikinumab, an interleukin-1 beta inhibitor anti-inflammatory therapy, had about a 16% reduction in uh, myocardial infarction, secondary myocardial infarction. So we kind of wanted to take a step further and see, was this simply due to reduction in systemic inflammation, or were there more local benefits at the coronary levels? Mm -hmm. And what did you find? So we found um, in a group of patients who were receiving biologic therapy, and they were imaged with uh, CCTA at baseline in one year, that there was about a 10% reduction in the non-calcified soft plaque portion and when we look at um, how this tracked with changes in interleukin 1 beta which we know is a pro-inflammatory cytokine we see that there was a positive association even adjustment for uh, cardiometabolic uh, risk factors and of course the interleukins are involved in the synthetic pathway to CRP so were right. there reductions in CRP in your study yeah so we actually did see a reduction in CRP um, it was significant um, and much more significant in the biologic treated group than the mm -hmm. non-biologic treated sure. group. Um, and it, but it's difficult kind of to use CRP as a marker in psoriasis, but we know in the cardiovascular world that there's um, what we call residual inflammatory risk sure. when we have a CRP of greater than two. So that kind of might be a group of patients who might benefit from mm -hmm. an anti-inflammatory So which treatment. one was more closely related to regression? Was it the change in interleukins or the change in CRP? Can you tell us about the mechanism yeah. here? So the mechanism is very complicated, as you know. Um, in terms of which one was more closely related, for our subgroup of patients, we saw that interleukin-1 beta was uh, more tightly related. Um, we did see kind of a CRP reduction with any type of um, psoriasis treatment, mm -hmm. so it was difficult exactly to track if mm -hmm. that was um, mm -hmm. had effects on the coronary. So it seemed like the interleukin was more directly related. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. This is uh, really groundbreaking stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us, Yusuf. Thanks for joining us here live from Sky 2018.